They said we weren't supposed to win that game. Mm. That's what they said. They said we weren't supposed to win that game because the, the Atlanta Hawks are what's to come and what's the future of what's going on in the Eastern Conference because of Trey Young and because of the assortment of dudes that he has on his team. So the Knicks, the fluke was supposed to end yesterday. <laughs> but did it? Mm. Ah! Oh, man. Yo, yesterday was a buzzing day. First and foremost, I'm telling you right now, if you do not follow a Knicks fan on Twitter, I'm telling you right now, a 4-3 and three Knicks team, if you are a fan of any team outside of the Knicks, you do not want the Knicks to be an NBA championship contender. I'm telling you, I'm telling, I'm telling you, the ignorance will be at a full-time high. Myself, I was losing my mind. I forgot what part of the season we were in because I'm like, yo, we need to beat this team. What a win. Tom Thibodeau, we got a coach, ladies and gentlemen. We got a coach. I can't wait to get into this video. I'm, I'm done with this. I have no time for a funny ha ha he he intro for you guys. Let's get into the video. Run the intro. What's going on, CK Crew? Boy, CK2K. Welcome back to another video following another dub for the New York Knicks, this time against the Atlanta. Hawks, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. Clap it up, boys. We got another one. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Do not forget to like this video, guys. I'm all, I'm feel. <laughs> I'm hype. Now here's the thing, man. When you sit back, breathe for a second. You look at this, and you're like, you know what? The New York Knicks are four and three, meaning only seven games have been played. We didn't even get to ten games. I said it yesterday, and I'm gonna say it again. Is it too soon? to be this excited about how the Knicks are playing? My answer remains, no, it's not too soon. We are playing a good brand of basketball, and like I said, if this team decides to just clunk, clunk out and start losing games, the point of the matter is, I guarantee you in those losses, we were fighting in every single one of those games. It's not like Knicks of the past, where you can see the Knicks would play solid basketball one game, and then we would go 10 games straight, where you're just like, what am I watching right now? We are competing every single night. Even last night in a game where it was looking like it was the end, I thought we were going to lose this game. It was looking like it was the end for us in this game. There was a point it was 68 to 82 or something like that. And then we rallied back in that fourth quarter. We are playing NBA basketball. And if you're like me, you have to allow yourself to, to enjoy it because you're just not used to it as a Knicks fan because you're just waiting for the fall. You're waiting for the third quarter of doom. You're waiting for fourth quarter Julius Randle or Alfred Payton or whoever it was in the past to just do something to mess it all up. You're just waiting for RJ Barrett's shot to suddenly stop falling. You're just waiting for the Emmanuel quickly trajectory to just start taking a downward. You're just waiting for any possible negative thing to happen to happen because that's just how it's been in the past with the new york knicks every year something goes wrong so you're just waiting for that moment to happen again but one thing that was always the same that is not the same now is the coaching and for once we got a coach that is going in there and doing what he does and tom thibodeau is the man the tom thibodeau effect i'm gonna say it every video until it's not the Tom Thibodeau effect is real. So I'm not going to play the standings game, though. I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to talk about a record being 4-3, and three, but I'm not going to play the standings game because I'm seeing the, the talk, and it's true. I'm seeing the talk. The Knicks right now are in the fifth seed. The Hawks, who were once at the top of the Eastern Conference because of our loss, now they're, or because of their loss, now they're below us in the Eastern Conference. I'm not going to talk about the standing stuff. I'm going to let you guys have that. Enjoy that. Because my mantra right now with this team and with what I'm witnessing with my eyes, because I'm like I just mentioned, I'm still getting used to the fact that there might be a possibility where those possible negatives and the PTSD may not happen this year. So I'm still getting used to that. And in that process, I have to play this game by game. I have to watch this game by game because, look, we played a lot of great teams that are hot in the Eastern Conference. Tomorrow is going to be one of our first tests. We're playing the Utah Jazz tomorrow. We know how the Utah Jazz have decided to manhandle us in years in years on end. Like it's just it's a never-ending cycle of how often this team manhandles us. If you don't know, 
Google it and you'll see how we have fared against the Utah Jazz in the past. To me, this game tomorrow is one of the realest tests that we're going to see on how we play, on if this is the real deal. Even if we lose tomorrow's game, if it's a loss by five points, knowing that we, we competed the entire game, that's a loss I'm willing to take. Tomorrow's game is the real test. But before we get to tomorrow, we got to talk about the great game that was the, the Knicks and the Atlanta Hawks. We got to talk about that. You know it's a new season in a new age when you're watching the New York Knicks and the Atlanta Hawks play defense. And Clyde said it several times because it's it's true. The Atlanta Hawks, I mind you, the Knicks are another level, but the Atlanta Hawks have been dead last in defense for at least the last three seasons. Dead last. Mind you, when you have Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter on your wings and a guy like John Collins, who is who is known to be a, a shot blocker from time to time, and obviously Clint Capella, it, it's expected for the defense to step up a little bit. But the way that they play their defense, you're seeing that Lloyd Pierce's teachings is finally coming through. I mean, obviously, they did bring in a guy like Nate McMillan. Good for them, okay? But at the same time, we've been continuing this brand of defense that we've been playing the entire season so far. And that was also nice to see. The fact of the matter is, the Atlanta Hawks just came from playing the Brooklyn Nets two times. They obviously went one and one in those times against the Brooklyn Nets. But both times they played them, it was a shootout. I think they scored, what, 141 points in the last game? Please fact check me. See, editing CK, throw up the score for the last game that they played against the Brooklyn Nets. Point of the matter is 141 points. So you knew that tonight was either going to be a high scoring game and the Knicks were hopefully going to stay toe to toe with them or defense was going to be key and defense was definitely the key factor of last night's game against the Atlanta Hawks. The ending score was 113 to 108. The Atlanta Hawks from getting above 120 points this season and that is a big feat. Trey Young still went out there and had himself a game 31 points 14 assists but it was a tough 31 points. Our physical defense you could tell especially in the first half it was slowing them down a bit and that is what you got to do and that is where the Alfred Payton comes in. Alfred Payton did a solid job slowing him down. I mean, and mind you, come the second quarter, Trey Young figured him out, but for the most part, it slowed him down in the beginning of the game where we had that 31 to 29 first quarter um, where it, we were looking good and we were making all our shots on our side, but we were also slowing down Trey Young. He eventually kicked it, uh, kicked it in high gear, but then that's when Emmanuel quickly ended the deal, but we're going to talk about that in a second. The Cam Reddish, RJ Barrett battle, the, the, the two Dukies having a battle. You know I'm an RJ RJ Barrett and a Cam Reddish guy. I love both of those players. I'm a huge fan. I would love to see Cam Reddish somehow, some way, make his way to the New York Knicks to play, pair up with RJ Barrett. But that's neither here nor there. I love Cam Reddish. There are people who believe that Cam Reddish is better than RJ Barrett. There was conversations. There was a time where they were the two, the top two prospects of the draft last or two years ago, last year. Let's not forget that. But in this situation, you know that RJ Barrett took this situation and took this matchup seriously. And you saw that tonight because RJ Barrett was Bushing his ass. Cam Reddish struggled in that game with 10 points, but again, the defense was the biggest part of Cam Reddish's game for them uh, last night. Clint, Clint Capella with the 12 and 12 game. Like I said, John Collins, 18 and 8. He was killing us from three point line. I know he developed a shoot, a, a shoot, developed a shot, but I didn't know it was hitting at that level. But we limited the Atlanta Hawks to 32% from the three point line. We were 33% ourselves, but for them to shoot 31 three point shots and only make 10 of them, that is good defense on our end, and that is a good feat on our end. I mean, mind you, we, we've shot 50% from the field, which is good for us, 46% for them. But at the same time, the fact that we limited their three-point shot, or at least were able to temper their three-point shot, that was a huge, huge W, and I feel like that was a big part of why we ended up taking that game. We survived another third quarter of death. We survived another one. We matched their 30 points in the third quarter, and then we ran away in the fourth quarter, scoring 20 to their 20 we survived another second half matter of fact we're turning into these cardiac kids where all of a sudden when we do drop these leads it's not like how it was in the past where the knicks you drop a lead going to the fourth quarter that's the game <laughs> it, it's not it hasn't been that way this season thus far and we showed that yet again in this game against the atlanta hawks and it's just nice to see now after talking about the team effort now you know 15 turnovers their 12 that kind of stuff um what else i think we have what like nine ten steals um I think they only had like four like we did good stuff on the defense
defensive end. Our assists, we had more assists than them, which is a huge feat in itself because they are a, a ball moving team, blah, 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 blah. But now let's talk about the individual efforts and we cannot go any further than not talking about Julius Randle and RJ Barrett, starting with Julius Randle. Now, mind you, both of these dudes played 42 pl 40 plus minutes. Julius Randle with 43, RJ Barrett with 44. Just 48 minutes in the game. Julius Randle had to play more minutes, though, because Nerlens Noel had an ankle injury, even though there's some rumors going on out there in the world. If you don't know him, go on Twitter and search him. Just search Nerlens Noel. You'll see some things. But regardless, Julius Randle went out there and had an almost another triple-double game, scoring 28 points, 17 boards, and 9 assists. Another game where he has 7-plus assists. This man is looking like he's trying to average a triple-double, and if he is playing the way he is playing, I have no problem with it. He was a mid-range fiend in this game. There were some moments where he tried to sell a little bit in the fourth quarter looking like you know he was trying to revert a little bit to 2020 Julius Randle was a little worrisome what was good that we had Emmanuel quickly next to him rather than Alfred Payton so he didn't have his running mate for the fourth quarter sale that they normally go for didn't happen this game Julius Randle did clean it up and then end up having a, a better ending even though he had that vital turnover at the end followed by Reggie Bullock's vital turnover at the end too like I said RJ Barrett and Julius Randle were just good the entire game RJ Barrett was on it was almost as if he saw the whole team wearing Indiana Pacers jersey because he continued that solid shooting and that solid play in this game. And I don't think we're talking about enough how RJ Barrett is averaging seven rebounds a game. He had 11 boards in this game. RJ Barrett is flexing his muscle. Now the assists are down a little bit even though he had five in this game. RJ Barrett is, I've said it so many times and I feel even more confident about it now. RJ Barrett has the potential to be a triple double tickler is what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> No, we ain't gonna call it. We're gonna call it something else. Bro, what are you talking about, man? RJ Barrett has the ability to flirt with the triple double every night. It's <laughs> the triple double ticket. Like, I'm just like. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. I'm sorry, RJ. He has the ability to teeter around a triple-double night every single night. He has that ability to do it. I'm not saying that that is what we're going to be seeing, not this year, but for the longevity of his career, I think he has the ability to do it because he is stepping up that rebounding part of his game. He's been a guy that can rebound at the guard position, but to this level, 11 rebounds, 7 rebounds, 8 rebounds, not like he's having these kind of nights. That is something that really just makes you think like, oh, man. Oh man, we got ourselves a complete dude. And that shot is coming around. Let's not forget, this is year two. Year two, y'all coming in on this man, RJ Baird, as if he's been in the league for five years and there's no way, shape, or form that he's ever gonna have a jump shot. This is year two. And yes, he is going to take more shots because that is how you get better at the shot. Of course, you don't want to enforce him. I get that. I'm with you on some of that. But at the same time, I have no problem with him shooting this. If he is open, shoot the damn ball. Three-point shot, shoot the damn ball. That's how he gets better. There's, I, I've said this so many times. There's so many players that have been in similar situations. He said it himself. There's so many superstars that are in situations like him that were not shooters to start out with. And at the, some point in the middle of their career, they became shooters. The number one example I will forever use is LeBron James. LeBron James did not have a jump shot, but LeBron James did the exact same thing that RJ Barrett is doing right now. He still shot the ball. That is how you get better. You put in the work when you're not on TV and you're not on the courts and playing against other teams. You put in the work behind the scenes. And then when you're out there, the shot is available for you. You take the shot. That is how you get better. That's what the problem is with a lot of people and Ben Simmons because he can hit these shots behind the scenes, but he's not shooting them during the game. With our own Mitchell Robinson, same thing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I have no problem with him taking these shots and improving in his second year in the league. Second year in the league. This is what the definition of development is. So I'm loving that he's doing this. And now he's also working in these nice off the dribble mid range shots. Yo, I'm telling y'all, keep sleeping on RJ Bear. This, the RJ Bear haters, I can't wait. Oh, I cannot wait. I can't wait. This is his second year, bro. Second year and he's already making strides like this. Y'all keep hating. Keep sleeping. Keep sleeping on my boy RJ Bear. Keep sleeping. But now let's talk about the bench mob. And when I say the bench mob, it's not really much of a mob as like the bench trio because only three dudes came up off the bench in tonight's game. And that was Kevin Knox, Emmanuel Quickly, and Austin Rivers. And all three of these guys impacted the game the way that they have been impacting it in the time that they've been playing. Austin Rivers playing his third game of the season and once again looking like the guy that a lot of people are excited about. He played 33 minutes off the bench. Again, more than Alfred Payton with only 29 minutes as the starting point guard 
um, it was nice to see. Emmanuel Quickly and Kevin Knox only played 19 minutes, or 19 minutes for Emmanuel Quickly, 18 for Kevin Knox, but Emmanuel Quickly almost scored a point a minute, having 16 points in those 19 minutes, and not only that, it was an impactful uh, time that he had on the court. He was drawing fouls on players. He was playing solid defense on Trey Young, solid defense on anybody who was being switched on. Uh, he was controlling the offense, and we all we've seen it every time Emmanuel quickly is on the court. You see a better product out of Kevin Knox. You see a better product out of everybody, but Kevin Knox especially because he had a hard time hitting the shot in the first half. But then that third quarter, when him and Quick went out, buckets were coming in for both of them. My favorite sequence was the end of that third quarter where you saw uh, Emmanuel quickly make a nice shot, and then Kevin Knox ending the third quarter with a buzzer beater three in the corner it was just nice to see and i love seeing this rotation but again this is just the tom thibodeau effect he is a guy that keeps the rotation tight so then the question is when alec burks comes back in who loses minutes to me i think it's an obvious answer it's reggie bullock i understand reggie bullock gives us something on the defensive end but at the same time his shot has not been consistent enough and there's been a lot of moments where even for his defense he's been left in a lot of situations so i feel like if a swap happens with Alec Burks, or maybe even you see Alec Burks get some minutes and we have a nine-man rotation, uh, maybe something like that will happen. But the thing I want to see is I want to see Emmanuel Quickly's 19 minutes move up to at least 25. Because Emmanuel Quickly has, every time he's on the court, you're getting production from him. Every single time. Emmanuel Quickly plays three more minutes, this dude has 22 points. Cannot tell me otherwise. But that's it for me today. I, like I said, I'm so hyped up, and I know you guys are hyped up. Nick's Twitter was going crazy last night. And if you don't follow me over on Twitter, I don't know what you're waiting on because we have a lot of fun over there on Twitter. But guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and do not forget to like this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game last night. Let me know what you're thinking about tomorrow's game against the Utah Jazz. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in tomorrow's video because, like I said, this is the real test to me. The Utah Jazz is a team that goes out there and manhandles us every time we play them. And it's the first real Western Conference team that we're playing. If not the first Western Conference team at all. But yeah, this is the first Western Conference team we're playing right now. So let's see how we go out there and we play against this team tomorrow. Let me know your thoughts on everything mentioned. And the Jazz, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's me, your boy CK. Catch you guys in the next one. Let's get it. I'm out of here. Oh boy. Four and three. Feel good. Let a friend know. You four and three. What's your team doing? Feeling like I won the lotto Always taking trips with a new chick Asking where the time goes oh. And I wonder if this is all I'll know